As long as it holds this 60,000 level, Bitcoin can rally to 68. If it breaks and confirms, 52,000, maybe even 49,000 is potentially in play. Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway shares his latest market analysis with key stock chart examination and Bitcoin price levels. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. BTC slash USD continued to feel pressure from geopolitical uncertainty focused on the Middle East while failing to claw back losses from earlier in the week. Reacting, traders remained torn between further downside and $60,000, acting as a definitive recovery zone. Anyone bullish into October is on the wrong side, popular trader and analyst Tony Kinyo wrote in his latest X post, predicting $56,000 as the next BTC price target. We'll take a look at the pre-market action. And what we can see here on the S&P 500 or the SPY is that we are seeing initially a down move. This was at four in the morning right here when the SPY began to trade. We saw a gentle float up, but now we're starting to see a little bit of downside coming back into the markets here. So we are net negative. This is where we closed yesterday. So we're not down a ton. It's not like the markets are falling off a cliff and they shouldn't be, right? So yes, you have concerns about the Middle East, but the markets are also looking forward to that non farm payrolls number tomorrow morning at 8 30 a.m when you think about economic data folks there's three reports a month that are the most big the biggest ones you have the pce data which is inflation data cpi inflation data and the non-farm payrolls report so tomorrow is one of those three top reports for the month and we'll get that information at 8.30 in the morning. Now, we did get jobless claims this morning. Jobless claims were expected to be around 222,000. So we'll write that in, two, two, and two. That was what expectations were. They came in at 225,000. Now, that's virtually in line with estimates. So there's nothing to see here. No reaction whatsoever of significance in the markets pre-market. As again, it just turns that attention right to that non-farm payrolls report tomorrow morning morning. All right, let's go back to the charts and see what is moving today as we get into the action. And we did see Stellantis, which continues to see selling pressure here. If we take a look at the chart, we can see that this stock is down again today, trading right around 13. Now, if we flip over to the daily chart, look at how much downside this stock has been has seen here just since April and May in this market. And again, this is Chrysler, this is Dodge, Ram, you, you, all of those type of vehicles. That's what they kind of do here. So again, they're a automaker and essentially shipping out those autos. And they've seen lots of lack of demand, I should say. Consumers pulling back partially interest rates because interest rates on vehicles are now high. And then also the consumers struggling. We know that. And that is causing an issue here. So the key today was that the CEO said that he's not sure if they're going to be able to pay the dividend. And that's causing further downside. Now, if we go back to the chart, there are some key levels to watch. As a day trade today, I'm going to keep a very close eye on this 18, uh, 1285 level. 1285, there's a little pivot point right in there. That's going to be potentially a day tradable level. On a swing trade basis, if this keeps falling, you get to about 11 and a half, and there's this major low right here. That, to me, would be very, very interesting. All right, so that's your update on Stellantis. Watch those levels here in the morning session. Let's take a look at Tesla here, guys. Tesla is under pressure again today. Come Coming back in after Bernstein, which is an analyst firm, basically said that the growth for the EV market was going to be so small, like under 10% when it was expected to be like 30%. And that is, again, causing issues for names like Tesla, because obviously their numbers are, are shrinking. Even with discounts that they're applying to their vehicles, they're see we're still seeing demand for EVs come down sharply. Now, this leads us into the trade of the day, which I promoted here on the thumbnail, folks. I have an idea, and it's just an idea, but I think it makes a lot of sense. And we're going to go here to the chart and take a look. So follow me over here, guys, and we'll take a look at the chart here. The name is Carvana. 
Now, the reason why, and notice how I kind of draw my, uh, my ideas and connect the dots. So the idea is Stellantis is struggling, autos, right? Uh, Tesla, EVs, autos, struggling. Um, you go to real world experience. I have people, traders in this office that have gone and bought a new car or leased a new car and the, the, the auto sellers are like, man, it's been a ghost town around here. So it's not just EVs, it's the whole auto sector. All right, so again, you could make the case, oh, it's only EVs, but that's not the case. So Carvana has a totally different business model than obviously, you know, an in-person experience. It's all about buying online, but it doesn't change the fact that there is a slowdown in the auto sector here. And by doing that, we then turn to the chart and we say, okay, look at this amazing parallel channel right through here, and we're right up into that level. So if you look at Ford, Ford's chart, so Ford Motor Company, it's down here. If you look at Stellantis, it's down here. If you look at GM, it's held up a little bit better, but it's gone down as well. My thought process here, connecting the dots, is that Carvana may see some downside today and into the next few weeks and even the next few months uh, with earnings coming out in the not too distant future. Uh, at least potentially a downside to this 134, 135 level, which would be the low end of the parallel. So you're using a combination of fundamental analysis as well as technical analysis to isolate down a potential good trade setup. Let's go into some crypto action today, guys, as we go into Bitcoin's chart here and we flip back to the daily chart. We can see that Bitcoin continues to struggle right here at the pivot point. And again, I've talked about this pivot point for months now as being a major level. We can see how how again it came up hit it pulled back broke above it and now it's retraced into that level as long as it holds this 60,000 level Bitcoin can rally to 68 if it breaks and confirms 52,000 maybe even 49,000 is potentially in play now I do have a trade so I entered four new trades in the crypto service today smart money crypto I'm gonna give you guys one of them here so if we take a look at this chart look at this nice chart of chain link chain link down sloping trend line Upsloping trend line, X marks the spot, that's a starter position for me. Now notice how I'm saying starter position, it's not an all-in position, I never do that first of all, but even when I'm looking to accumulate let's say a 5% of portfolio or 10% of portfolio, I always start small. Why? Because I go into a trade thinking I might be wrong. It's a much different concept than most people. Most retail goes into a trade thinking about how much money they're going to make, how many Lamborghinis they're going to buy, whatever it may be, and it makes them go in too heavy. Well, when you go in too heavy, you get handcuffed. You can't maneuver. You can't dollar cost average. You kind of emotion starts to creep up. And this goes into that next point I made in the thumbnail today talking about emotion. How to keep emotion out of it. There's a couple ways. Lower share size or, or, or coin size basically with, if you're dealing with crypto or commodity size if you're doing commodities. But lowering that means that it's not going to be so emotional, meaning that every little up or down is not going to make you freak out, which makes you then susceptible to doing what the institutions want you to do, which is freak out and exit your position or FOMO in, right? So think about it. It's a game. It's a game. The institutions are playing games with you. They want you to go heavy. They want you to think. They want to use your emotion against you so that you over leverage yourself, which means they can push things in a certain direction, make you freak out, exit for a loss, and throw in the towel. The lower your share size, the more you're just like, you know what? This is the chart. These are the facts. And when you follow the facts and you have the normal share size or the normal coin size, you follow the charts because you're not freaking out. And you say, no, that chart still looks good. It still has these factors to it. That's the key. In addition, education. The more you study charts and you see that every time or 80% or of the time something happens X, Y, Z or, or th a price comes into the X marks the spot or it confirms above and then it retraces to the scene of the crime. All the things that I teach in these game plans, when you look at those, right, and you see them working over and over again a high percentage of time, you begin to trust it and it takes the emotion out. It minimizes the emotion, and that's the key. So education and proper position size. Those are the keys to limiting emotion, which then makes you able to weather the, emotion, the institutional games where they'll push things to extremes when you have a good position on the table. All right. Let's get into other things here, guys. We're going to jump over to gold. Appreciate you guys lasting there with me in, in that little bit of a rant there uh, on some keys, but I do think it's an important factor here. If we take a look over here at the charts, we have gold. Gold is right up into this level. This is my 2660 level that I've talked about for quite some time. That so far is holding suit. It's still holding. 
Granted, we have to be open to the possibility that tomorrow's jobs report could trigger a move, a big move in gold. But remember, if it confirms above right here, then you have your next upside move. My next little minor target's around 27.10. But again, as of now, you trust the level until proven otherwise. Always remember that. A lot of us, because especially when we over leverage, we're like, we're like on pins and needles, like, oh my goodness, it's going to break. Oh, what if it does? And it starts to make us emotional and react emotionally, which makes us do the wrong thing. So like tomorrow on the jobs report, gold could go like this. Initially, a lot of people freak out. They exit a short and then it reverses back down. And then when you look at it later, you're like, oh crap, I got whipped out of the trade. We've all had that happen to our, each, you know, I've had that happen to myself as well. But the point being is if you have a normal share size, you can weather that storm and you wait patiently because you know the confirmation signal, you know the other factors out there. Very, very important, all right? Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.